In this video, I'll be going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy A53 for beginners. Welcome to the video. If you are new to smartphones or new to Samsung phones, you have come to the right place. Today, I'll be walking you through everything you need to know to use the Samsung Galaxy A53. Now this is specifically a beginner's walkthrough, so I'm gonna take it down to a very basic level. So we'll go over buttons, how to find everything, navigating the phone, downloading apps, signing into your email, and even how to make calls, send text messages, and how to take pictures. So if that sounds like what you need to learn, you're in the right place, and let's jump in and get started. My one ask of you before the video starts is if you find yourself in a section where you learn something cool, make sure you hit that like button down below. It helps us continue to make future content for you. And if you find something cool, make sure to leave it in the comment section down below. So we'll make sure to keep that going for our future videos. All right, let's start with our button navigation. So on the outside of the phone here, you'll find most of the buttons are gonna be on the right side. We have a power button down here, power sleep button. Pressing it will wake up the phone. Pressing it again will put the phone asleep. Here we'll have a volume up and a volume down button. This will just help you again toggle through your sound settings. You won't find anything on the left side of the phone. Left side is blank. You won't find anything at the top. The top is pretty clean. At the bottom, you will find your SIM card tray right here, and you'll find your charging port. Now this phone uses a type C charging type, and unfortunately, it will not come with a wall charger in the box, just the USB cable, FYI. Now I will have a link below in the description of where you can find some really inexpensive, but quality chargers for this phone. So definitely check out the description section for those links. Okay. So, we're gonna tap our power button to wake up the screen. Just take your finger, put it on the screen. Oh, if you find the screen goes off before you can do this, just simply tap the screen twice, and that usually will wake up the screen. Take your finger, put it on the screen, and just drag it up, and that'll take you right into the phone. And now, we're at the home screen. Now, you'll find on the home screen three buttons at the bottom. A recent apps button, a home button, and a back button. Let's walk through what these buttons do. So these are the main three buttons that you'll be using to navigate the phone. The first important button you'll need to know is the home button, and basically this always takes you back to this screen. So if I were to tap on this button, which is your internet button, if you wanna browse the internet, you would tap on this, which is your Google Chrome or your internet browser. Tapping on this will take us to the web where we can do some searches, go to a website, check on news, current events, whatever. If we wanna get back to that home screen, we're gonna tap our home button. Just like that, it takes us back to our main screen. No matter what you're doing, this button will always take you back to your home screen. And if you ever don't see this button at the bottom of the screen, because sometimes when you're in a video, this button will, will disappear temporarily. You just swipe up from the, up the, from the bottom, you swipe up, it'll bring up this menu, and then you can tap that to go back to the home screen. Next, we have our back button. The back button does exactly what it sounds like. It takes us back one step. So for example, if I wanted to go to I'm gonna to go to the settings. I'm in the settings menu. I know I did that quickly. Don't worry, I'll show you how to get back to settings in a, in a later part of the video. Let's say I found one of the menu options and I selected it, and then I made another selection. If I want to go back one step, all I have to do is tap the back button, and it will take me back one step, just like that. Every time I tap it, it'll take me back one page. And you'll get to a point where there's nowhere else you can go. So if I tap it again, it'll take me back to the home screen. So all you need to know is the back button takes you back one step. Now on the left side here, we have what's called the recent apps button. And this button, when you tap it, it'll show you um, the apps that you previously had open. 
Now I keep using this word apps. I want to explain to you exactly what that is. So these little icons, they're all called apps. Apps are short for applications. Think of like a computer. On a computer you have programs. On phones you have apps. So if you hear me say the word apps, just know I'm referring to these little icons, okay? So the recent apps button, when I tap this, it will show me all the uh, apps that I have used previously on the phone. If you remember a few minutes ago, we went to settings. So here's my settings app here. And we went to Google Chrome where I showed you how to use the back button. Well, these apps are still running in the background of the phone. So I can simply get back to this menu by tapping this. This will show me everything that's running and I can easily just swipe up if I wanna close any of these applications that have been running in the background. One important thing to note, if I go to Google Chrome and then I hit the home button to go back to the home screen, Google Chrome is still running in the background and if I want to close it, I have to hit recent apps, swipe up, and then it's actually closed. That's really all that third button does. Okay, so that's our button navigation. We now have walked through our exterior buttons and now our uh, buttons that are on screen. Next, we will move into what is called our notification panel. Now, this is where you will see different notifications coming through the phone. For example, if you get a call, if you get a new email, if you get a text message, they'll show up in this section called the notification panel. So just like that, if you wanna to get to that menu, you'll just need to swipe down from the top of the screen like that, and then you can see what notifications have come through the phone. And right now, there aren't too many. I haven't had any calls or texts or emails, but if I did, it would show up in this menu, and I would simply tap on them to open that message to read it further. Now, I do have a notification from the weather app, and I can tap on that, to explore further what came through that notification. Now, what you'll also find in this section is what are called your um, switches. And these little switches control different options or different settings on the phone. For example, if you wanted to connect to your home Wi-Fi network or you're at a friend's house, you wanna to connect to their Wi-Fi, guess what? You would need to use this little switch, which is a shortcut to the Wi-Fi uh, settings where you connect to a network. So first, you wanna make sure it's lit up and it's lit up in blue, which means that our Wi-Fi is turned on. Now next, I need to hold down on this little icon for one second, and that's gonna take us to the menu just like this. So hold. Let's try it again. Hold. Now, it's taking us right to our Wi-Fi menu. And this is where you can see what Wi-Fi networks are available and you can select the network you'd like to connect to. Now I'm currently connected to my home Wi-Fi, which is right here. Now what you would do is look for your networks. Let's say your home network was Spectrum 468. You would find it on the list, tap on it, and then the keyboard would pop up for you to enter the password and then you would tap the blue button to connect. And that's how you connect to a Wi-Fi network. That's it. Let's back out of here. Now there's a few more options you'll find in that notification panel. You'll find your sound button. Now the sound button is gonna allow you to basically put your phone on vibrate or silent, just like this. Just tap on the icon and you'll see that the, the visual is gonna change. Now it's a slash over the speaker, and if I tap it again, guess what? It's not blue anymore, and that's telling us that our sound is completely turned off. If I get a call or get a text message, my phone is not going to ring, and it's not gonna make a sound. Now if I wanna turn that sound back on, I simply am gonna tap that button, and guess what? Now my phone is ready to make noise again. So if I get a call, it's gonna ring. If I get a text, I'll get a, a ping notification. We also have our Bluetooth icon here. If you have a Bluetooth speaker or headphones, 
you can, same thing, hold down on the button. It'll take you to your Bluetooth menu and this will allow you to connect to be able to then use uh, your Bluetooth device with your phone. And there's a, a lot more options in here. You've got your rotation, you've got your airplane mode, you have a flashlight, you can turn this on and use your flash as a flashlight. That's a super helpful feature. You'll also notice you have a shortcut right here to your settings. And if I tap here, it'll take me to the phone settings menu where I can then go through and make more advanced changes. So you'll find a lot in this notification panel section. Now a few more things that I want to show you before we move on to the next section. If I swipe down again a second time, it's going to bring up more switches that I can control. We have a power saving mode. This will allow your battery to stretch a lot longer. We have um, a screen recorder mode. If I swipe left, we have some other cool options, nearby share where you can send pictures and videos to other Android users. You have a lot of other cool options and you have a QR code scanner right here. Tapping this will allow you to open up your camera and make your phone ready to be able to scan a QR code. So a lot of great options. I encourage you to play around this menu because you'll find a lot of important um, settings here. Now there's one last thing I want to show you that is very important for you to know, which is how do I turn this phone off? One thing you'll notice is this button here, um, just pressing it is going to put your phone asleep, but the phone is not off. If I tap it again, it's going to wake up the phone. But watch this. If I swipe down once and I swipe down again, guess what? I now have a power button that shows up here. You'll notice if I am just here, I don't see the power button. But that second swipe down is what gives you the power button. And now I can tap that button and I can power the phone off, restart it, or go into the emergency mode setting. So important thing to note, wanted to make sure you knew about that. Okay, the very last thing I'm gonna cover in our sort of first section here, which is just navigating the phone, is how to find where your apps are. So as you swipe left and right, you'll see a couple of apps, but there's more than what you see on the screen. So you'll need to swipe up and this will take you to what is called your app drawer. This is where you'll find all the apps that are installed on your phone. So I can swipe left and you'll find more on this page here. And basically these are all the different apps that are currently installed on the phone. But you might say to yourself, well, I want more apps. Where's Uber? Where's Solitaire, slot machines? I want more apps on my phone. Well, let's now move into our next section where I'll be covering how to download apps. Okay, let's talk about downloading apps on your phone. So you'll need to go to what is called the Play Store to download applications, um, which you'll find the app right here. This white icon with the little play button, that is your Play Store. Let's tap on that now. Now, one important thing to note before we get into downloading apps is when you tapped the play button, you might see one of two things. You might either see what I'm seeing right now, which is we're in the store and we're able to download apps, or you might see a white and blue screen that's asking you to sign into your Google account. One important note, you need to have a Google account to be able to download apps on the phone. What is a Google account? It could simply just be a Gmail. Now, if you have a Gmail, on the screen you'll see an option that says to sign in and you'll simply tap on that, enter your email address and your password and hit next. If you don't have a Gmail, don't worry, you should see a button in the bottom left corner of your screen that will say create an account. You can tap on that and you can create a Gmail in just one minute. They will allow you to create one on the phone right now. Assuming you have internet, you're gonna put in your first name, your last name, and they'll ask you what do you want your email address to be. Follow the prompts, and when you finish setting up your Gmail, it'll take you to this screen. 
which is called, again, the Google Play Store. The Play Store is where you'll find games, apps, and books. So let's walk through how to download an app. Now there's different ways to go about this. You either know what you're trying to download, and in that case you would search for it, or you don't know what you want to download, and you simply want to look around and see what you find. So, if you're someone who already knows what you want to download, and I'm gonna just do that first, I'm gonna say, hey, I want to download a solitaire game. I'm gonna use the search box at the top of the screen. The first thing I'll do is tap in the box, and I'm gonna type in solitaire. In fact, you can start typing it and it will begin to recommend um, games already. So I can just tap here, Solitaire, and it will begin to show me all the different options there are for Solitaire. You'll be surprised, there are quite a few. Now, another way you could have done that is instead of typing it, you simply tap on the microphone in the upper right corner right here. And once you tap the microphone, just say it, that's it. Solitaire. So that's a really cool shortcut to search for whatever you're trying to find. So I'm gonna say it, it's gonna search. And let's see, I'm gonna look through this list and see if there's any pictures I like. I think I want this solitaire. I'm gonna tap on it. And if you'll notice, I have this green button here that says install. Now, if that button says install, that's your way of knowing it is a free app. But if that button has a price where it says install, that means it is not a free app, it is paid. So be aware of that, just in case you weren't trying to pay for an app, you wanted to find a free version. I always say, try to find a free version first, and if you can't, then get a paid version. I'm gonna tap this green button that says install, and guess what? It's gonna begin downloading it to the phone. And just know that um, it will take a little time depending on how fast your internet connection is. So again, if your connection is quick, this could happen super fast. If your connection is not as fast, this could take a little bit longer, but it really doesn't matter. When this uh, circle fills up, that's gonna tell you it's installed. And when this button lights up green, we'll know that it's installed on the phone. And there it is, just that fast. Now I can either tap the play button here to go right into it, or I can tap the home button, swipe up, swipe to my left, and there's our new app, our Solitaire app. I can now tap on that, and I can begin playing Solitaire on my phone. So that is the process to download an app on the phone. Now, that's the first process. Now, I mentioned earlier that some of you might not know what you want to download, you just want to see what's available. So I want to show you quickly how to navigate the store to find different things you may want to download. Now, this is also a great opportunity for us to use our back button, because if I tap this, it'll take us out of this app and go back to the main page. So watch this. There we go. And if I tap it again, It'll take us back another step. And now we're on the home page of the Play Store. So you'll find first at the bottom of your screen, the store is broken up into games, apps, and books. So make sure you're on the right tab before you begin searching. So if you're trying to find a game, make sure you're in the game section and they're only gonna show you games. But if you just wanna find an app, and an app can be like Facebook, for example. It could be uh, a note-taking app. You know, those are things you'll find in this section. So once you're, you're on the right section, at the top here, you'll find categories. So you'll find top charts, kids, or you can go to a category breakdown and then you can say, hey, what type of app am I looking for? And you can swipe through and see all the different uh, options there are. And then select the category from there to see a more specific list of apps that you might be looking for. So let's say we quickly went to house and home and we'll find apps that are for buying a home. And you can swipe through, you can swipe up and you'll find lots of app options there. 
So those are just a few tips on navigating the store where you'll be able to download apps. And that's our process of downloading apps to your phone. In the next section, we're gonna talk about how to make a phone call. So to make a phone call, you'll be tapping on this green button in the bottom left corner. This will take you to what is called the dialer. And under keypad, you'll see your numbers and you'll simply type in a phone number. I'm gonna enter a phone number now. And if I wanna call, I'm gonna tap the green button and that will initiate a call. Now I don't have a SIM card in here right now, so the call ends as soon as I initiate it, but the process is gonna be the same. Input the area code and the phone number, tap the green button, and that's how you initiate a call. Next, let's talk about how to send text messages. So you'll have this green button at the bottom of the screen. This is your messages app. We're gonna tap on that, uh, excuse me, not green button, blue button. Tap on the blue button. This will take us to our messages app. And I can tap on this little blue button, this little circle to start a new message. Let's enter a phone number. And then we're going to um, hit done at the bottom right corner. So now our text message is set up. I'm gonna send a message to this person. I'm gonna tap in this box where it says text message. And once my keyboard comes up, I can begin typing my message. Hi, happy Tuesday. There we go. Now I can simply hit this button here to send the message, or I can do a few more things. I can tap on this little icon here to send an emoji with it. Maybe you wanna send a smile or happy face. I can tap on this arrow right here and I can then attach a picture that I've taken on the phone. So tap on there. And then I can go to my gallery. I can tap on gallery and I can find a picture that I've just taken and I can attach it or I can raise up the phone right now and simply snap a picture by tapping on this little white circle here. There's my picture. I'm gonna tap this blue attach button. And guess what? Now. I've just attached a picture to my message and I'm gonna hit the arrow here to send it. Now again, I'm not connected to a network, so it's not gonna actually send it, but hitting this button is the last step that allows you to send off the message. And it's just that easy, that's how you send a text message. Now let's talk about how to make the text or the font size larger. The text is quite small out of the box, but all this can be adjusted in the settings. Who remembers how to get to the settings? That's okay, let me show you again. Swipe down from the top, go to the upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel, and we're gonna go to the display section and swipe up to first font size and style. And here we have a little blue bubble that we can drag to the right to make the font size bigger. And you'll notice the text here is gonna get bigger to reflect how much larger the font is gonna be. Here we go. So bigger, 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 and really big. So that is how you adjust the font size. Again, set it to what is appropriate for you and what you need. Um, you can also make the font bold to make it even thicker. And then you can go to font size. You can also change the style here as well, if that would be more helpful to have a different font style. Let's hit our back button. And usually there's two different options here, but on this phone, they've, they've consolidated it to just one option. So, this is all you need to adjust to make the font size bigger. Now, if we go to our home screen, you'll even notice our words are now bigger. And also, if we go to the, uh, the web as well, you'll notice the font is bigger here. So you'll, you'll notice the font will be larger across the phone.
Okay, let's talk about email now. So some of you may already have your email account on the phone. Uh, we talked about it earlier when we signed into the Play Store that you did need to have a Gmail on the phone, but you may have other email accounts you'd like to use. For example, you might have an AOL or Yahoo or an SBC Global. So if you want to sign into those accounts so you can also see those emails on the phone, you're gonna tap on this folder on the front here that says Google and tap on Gmail. You're probably saying to yourself, it's not a Gmail, it's something else. Well, guess what? The Gmail app will allow you to sign into multiple email types at the same time. You'll tap on the plus right here where it says add another email. And here you'll see a list of options. So Google, Outlook, Hotmail, Yahoo, Exchange. These are some of the other email types that you can use on the phone. Now, if you have an AOL, or an SBC Global, these, it, it's a bit harder to sign in using this app. So I wanna show you a little trick on how to find another app that will allow you to sign into those other email types. Let's go home. We're gonna to go to our Play Store, which is right here. We're going to take a step back. Okay, we're gonna tap in our search box up here and I'm gonna type it first in the left corner right here of the keyboard, I wanna to get to my special characters. I'm gonna type the at symbol, and then I wanna type in AOL or SBC. If you notice, they're already showing up on the screen here. So basically the, the trick is, whatever your email type is, you're gonna type the at symbol, and then AOL.com, SBC Global, whatever it is, to find an app that supports that email type. So in this case, I can just tap on AOL, and guess what? It's gonna show me an app that will work with AOL email accounts. So I can simply download this app, and I can use this for my AOL email. Or I can erase that, and I can try sbcglobal.net, and then it will give me a list of apps that support that email type. So guess what? The Yahoo app will allow you to log into your sbcglobal.net. Your email, all email access, or Samsung email, these are other email apps that will let you sign into an SBC Global. So I can tap here, tap my green install button, and it will begin to download that app on the phone. And guess what? Once it downloads, where are you gonna find it? Let's hit our home button. Swipe up, swipe to your left, give it a few seconds. We're gonna see it show up right here next to our Solitaire app. And then we can use that app to sign in to our email that is an sbcglobal.net. So that is a quick rundown of signing into your email accounts on the phone. And all you'll need to do now is, again, tap on one of the apps and input your email address and your password and you're all set. Next, we'll talk about the camera, how to take pictures, and then where do I find the pictures I just took? So you'll find in the bottom right corner, the camera icon, and I'm gonna tap on that. This will allow me to bring up the camera and take pictures. I'm gonna tap the white button here to snap the picture. And guess what? If I wanna make it a little bit clearer, because it looks a little blurry right now, I'm gonna tap on my main subject just like this and tapping on the subject will make it slightly clearer, and then hit the white button to snap that picture. Now, if I'd like to switch to a taking a video, I'm gonna tap on the video button right here, and notice my button's gonna change to a red button, and that's how I'll know that I am set up to take a video. I'm gonna tap the red button here, You'll see a timer at the top of the screen and that lets me know I'm recording a video. I can move it around just like this and then hit my stop button to stop the video. Now, you'll find a button, or excuse me, one more thing. So what if we wanna to switch to the front camera because we wanna now take a selfie? We're gonna tap that button to the right, right here. That'll reverse the camera 
And now I can take a selfie just like that. Now I want to make sure I move over to photo. There we go. It's a horrible selfie. I look horrible, but I'll take it for the sake of the video because I love you guys. Now I've taken up these pictures and now the question is, how do I go back and see the picture I just took? Well, you'll find a little icon to the left. This will take you to your gallery and the gallery will allow you to go back and look at all the pictures you just took and the videos. So that's how you do a quick review to see what you just shot. Now we can also go here, which is the gallery app. And here we can swipe up to see all the pictures we've just taken as well. We can sort them into albums. We can do a lot of cool stuff. So that's where you'll go to look at your pictures and see how clear they were. This one actually came out really beautiful. That's awesome. And then I have my video here that we just took. There we go. And guess what? If you don't like it, no problem. Tap on the trash can, move to trash. And now that video is gone. Just that easy. Let's tap our home button. And that's a quick rundown of using the camera and then how to look at your pictures after you've taken them. Now guess what? The fun does not have to stop here. Even though this is the end of our video, I have many more videos that you guys will find helpful follow-ups to this one. So if you'd like to learn more, you're gonna click on this little icon right here and that's gonna be a shortcut to my playlist where you'll find more videos on using the A53. I have a video that's called how to set up the A53 and there you'll learn more cool tips like setting up your fingerprint sensor, um, you'll learn how to download more cool apps for the phone, changing your wallpaper, cool stuff like that. So make sure you check out that video as well. Once again, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button down below. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. And lastly, if this video was helpful, do me a favor and leave me a couple of comments down below and let me know if it was helpful or if there's something else you would have wanted me to cover and I'll try to incorporate that in a future video. Thanks again for watching, take care, and as always, have a good one.